reference there. Uh, okay, I think we're uh, we're good to get started. Uh, I'd like to invite Wolf up to the podium here. He's going to tell us uh, all kinds of neat things about the Sublime Text Editor. Monk, 2014, uh, June. Uh, so, take it away, Wolf. you guys know about Sublime Text right now? Nothing? All right. Sublime Text is a graphical text editor. So it's great for editing your Python files, your JavaScript, your Go, whatever stuff you have that's text-based. Uh, it's cross-platform. It runs on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Um, I've got it installed with a, a light theme here. But I, I, I've noticed that after you get past Vim and Emacs, the next thing people fight about is whether their editor should be dark or light. <laughs> Have you noticed that? With a dark background or white background. <laughs> yeah, and most people seem to skew dark. Have you noticed that? That's what I use. So. Yeah, everybody seems to go dark. I don't know why that is. Some of the stories work in dark. <laughs> To me, the colors show up a lot better. They get they get washed out on the white background. So if if you're using uh, syntax highlighting, so wow, that is not gonna fit. I wonder what we can do about that. Okay, yeah, that fits. <laughs> All right. So first, how do you install? Um, Sublime Text. Sublime Text comes in two versions, Sublime Text 2 and Sublime Text 3. Sublime, Sublime Text 3 is the future, so that is the one I recommend using. I'm going to bring up the web browser. Kubuntu seems slow today. I don't know why. Maybe it's Firefox. Who do I blame? <laughs> Could be. I know it's close because it's stopped now. Are you in, uh, you're in Fusion? I am in Fusion. Uh, All right. So, sublime text dot com. Download. So can't app get it? Can't no. app get it. And then right here at the top it says Sublime Text 3 is currently in beta. It contains many improvements over Sublime Text 2, so click Sublime Text 3. And it will highlight the one that you're supposed to get. I'm running Kubuntu 64 bit, so it's highlighting Ubuntu 64 bit. So I'll just get that. It's actually pretty quick to get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the crash and 
happens here. Are you guys following along like that? <laughs> that could be a downfall. No, but does that get just upgrade uh, slugging zone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which network are you connected to, by the way? I'm using Mug. The Mug one? Okay. Yeah. Good one. I'm on the library. So it downloads as a uh, .dev file. Says to trust it, so. Yeah, definitely and trust. And you trust wolves. If only we could find some way to make a web of trust. Yes. <laughs> if only. This is much slower than when I practiced it. Yay, it's done. Sounds good. That's it. Are you, uh, when you're running Sublime Text at home, uh, are you doing it in Linux or in uh, Both. Linux? Mostly I use the Mac. Okay. Now, if I go to Applications, <coughs> Development, that's where I put it. Okay. Do you find it really does work the same? There is one major difference between the Mac and the other platforms. And that is on the Mac, most things are command this, command that. There's a key called command. So command C, command V, command blah, blah, blah. And on Linux and Windows, it's mostly control this, control that. So there's, but there, there, is, there is a super key to, to know of when you're doing programming of this thing. And you use the Windows version too? I have used the Windows version, but I don't use Windows very much, so. It is, and buying the license once, okay, here's the status of the program. It is free for use and experimentation. You don't have to buy a license, but if you don't buy a license, then it, warns you with this unregistered yeah. up there. All the functionality is there. It still okay. saves, it still makes new files, it still installs all the packages that you want. It just bothers you every once in a while. Yeah. If you want to own the, the product, then it's seventy dollars. Okay. Which sounds like a lot. Like especially to me right now, it sounds like a lot. <laughs> but um, it's really worth it. Is that a subscription or is that that is a one-time fee that buys you a license for version 3, and I don't know how far it will get you into version 4, if it gets you to anything in 4 at all. I don't know if there's going to be a version 4 or, or what. All right. But that would, one license would work on all the platforms? <laughs> Having one license works cross-platform. So you could have one license and have it on, <coughs> installed on all three things. You could have it installed on five computers if you want. Nice. For developers.
there's unofficial documentation. I'm going to give this list of links that I have here to Jim, and he can put it on the website later or whatever. Um, however, you want to communicate to everybody, because this this documentation is mostly about about links that are where where things are and what to do. Okay. This is the unofficial documentation, which is pretty good documentation. Um, and it's the first thing you should look over when you when you get Sublime Text. So the next thing to look at is themes. Right now, he's using Monokai. I use Idle, which is a light one. There are many, many more themes that are dark than, than are light. And uh, there's not just the built-in themes. There's themes that you can download from uh, package control, which I'm, I'm about to show you. But this leads to what do your preferences look like? And I am actually going to do that in. I just want this to be the right size for the window. I'm, I'm not satisfied with this tiny screen. It's yeah, very, it's very distressing to me. Alright. Yeah. Resolution. All right. So in the Mac version, preferences. Is